Our last presenters from today, for today are from the CEO Club, Alexander Polston, Faith Fergie, Emily Klinner, and Cole Schnetgoki. Their research is Turning Greens into Green. Their mentor is Dr. Cynthia Halliman. I'll turn it over to you. Hello and good afternoon. I'd like to thank everybody for coming and thank you, Ms. Leeson, for inviting me up to the podium. My name is Alexander Polston. I'm an accounting major here at Quincy University. Here with me, I have some fellow classmates from the CEO Club. Faith Fergie, also an accounting major. Emily Klinner, a marketing major. And our president, Cole Schnegoki, a finance and management major. We are all here to talk to you today in detail about what the CEO Club has been doing lately and how we plan to turn greens into green. If you look here to the right of me, you will see our latest project, which is a tower garden. A tower garden is a vertical aeroponic growing system that allows you to grow your own fresh produce indoors and outdoors while using minimal space and water. We wanted to have a garden in a college environment in hopes to persuade students to learn how to utilize a tower garden and possibly grow their own foods and make healthier eating choices. Here is a picture of a full tower garden. You can see the joy on the woman's face as she pulls the vegetables straight from the tower and puts them into her salad bowl. We were first given our tower garden by Dr. Margie. From there, we housed it in a small office room in the Oakley School of Business on North Campus. The first question we all asked ourselves is what plants should we put into the tower? After much research over which crops had the highest yield and most efficient harvest, we decided to plant following vegetables such as lettuce, kale, spinach, bok choy, and Swiss chard, and the following herbs such as basil, rosemary, chives, and cilantro. Along with the research and development aspect of the tower, as business students, we were challenged to turn the tower into a profitable business. Our club decided that if we were to pursue the growth of our business, then herb sales were the best way to make money in the community. Herbs are best used to improve your health and immune system or used to spice up your next meal. As well as planting, as a team, we had to come up with questions to try and maximize our profitability. Questions such as how will we utilize the space that we need, how we maintain the tower garden, such as weeding and watering, and how we inform the community about our project and why they should be interested. After much research with Dr. Margie, we found that you can make about 20 to $24 per square foot of growing area. To put that in perspective, a small growing area of 100 square feet can fit about 400 potted herb plants. When flipped, they can make about $2,400 in sales revenue. I would now like to invite Faith Fergie and Emily Klinner to talk to you more about our garden. Thank you, Alex. On the screen now, you can see some pictures of our tower garden and some of the vegetables we have planted. One of the vegetables we decided to put in our tower garden was basil. Basil is a very popular culinary herb that is a key ingredient in Italian cuisine and adds delicious flavor to many foods, including pasta sauces, pesto, salads, and pizzas. On average, you can expect to see the first basil leaves emerge within 7 to 14 days after planting them into your garden. Basil is a very fast-growing herb, and it takes anywhere from 4 to 6 weeks for a basil plant to reach maturity, and one tiny pot of basil expects harvest between 4 to 6 ounces of basil. On the screen, there's a picture of some very fresh and healthy basil plants. The next vegetable is kale. Kale is packed with nutrients such as vitamin A, C, and K, along with calcium, iron, and antioxidants. Kale is a slow-growing plant, and it can take several weeks for it to start growing. It takes about 5 to 10 days for kale plants to germinate. A single kale plant can yield several bunches of leaves and a well-maintained kale bed can produce 20 to 30 pounds of kale. 
On the screen is a picture of some nice kale. Another plant that we decided to place into our tower garden were chives. Chives are very hardy, nutrient-dense, easy to grow, and are also used in many culinary dishes. Chives provide many health benefits, including anti-cancer effects. Chives take anywhere from 10 to 14 days to germinate and six to eight weeks for the plants to reach a size that is suitable for transplanting. Chives also take anywhere from 80 to 90 days to reach maturity. On the screen is a picture of chives in another tower garden growing very large, but just not in our tower garden. Next, we planted rosemary. It has a strong fragrance and flavor. It also has many health benefits, and from seed to maturity, it takes about 90 to 120 days. On the screen is a picture of some harvested rosemary. The most important vegetable that we decided to place into our tower garden was lettuce. Lettuce is a leafy green vegetable that is used in many salads and sandwiches. It is very low calorie and high in vitamins and minerals and is good for a healthy diet, which is why we decided to place it to encourage healthy diets in college students. It can take anywhere from 30 to 75 days to reach maturity, and one tiny lettuce plant can produce one to two pounds of lettuce. On the screen is a picture of some very healthy and green lettuce. Next is Swiss chard. It's in the spinach family and it has large, tender, and slightly bitter leaves. It's often used in Mediterranean cuisine and it can take 50 to 70 days to reach maturity. Um, it is also often harvested as baby greens, which can be harvested after just a few weeks of growing. On the screen is a picture of some Swiss chard. We needed many research supplies for this large project. A lot of those were donated by Dr. Margaret Williams. One of those that she donated was our grant for the Tower Garden. She's letting us borrow hers for the time being, which was a value of $1,000. She also donated us many nutrient solutions, seeds, rock wool, and net pots. Once we started the plants into our Tower Garden to monitor growth and project yield, we then used all of the information from that to help us determine how many herbs we could expect harvest from one pot and then how many pots we would need to produce the desired amount of herbs. Our tower is housed in Francis Hall in the Oakley School of Business. It has 20 gallons of nutrient enhanced water which is stored in the bottom of the tower. A pump brings this water um, up to the top of the tower every hour and rains it down on the plants so that they stay nice and wet. There's also four LED grow lights on a 12 on 12 off timer and we also placed a small fan in the room with it and opened a window to try and give the plants more air to grow. Um, along with this, we check the pH level weekly and give the plants a booster of nutrient solutions. Next, we would like to bring up Cole to talk about financing and our findings. Thank you, Emily. Hi, everyone. My name is Cole Schnecke-Oki. Uh, I'm a finance major here at Quincy, so I'll be diving into the financial possibilities that the Tower Garden can offer for the CEO Club and Quincy University's Oakley School of Business. First, we will look at the financing options located in Tower Farms website. This website contains all the information needed to estimate what we will need to become profitable in this space. In order for us to successfully run a Tower Farm business, we would need to finance the purchase of more towers. Here is a comparison of the financing options of Tower Farms loan compared to a government loan, guaranteed bank loan, and traditional bank loan. As you can see, the Tower Farm loan is a more flexible option compared to these other loans. The reason we would need more gardens is because one tower is simply not enough to produce the produce we would need to sell. This is when we move into the profit calculation. Even though we're in the early stages, this profit calculation on the Tower Farms website will figure out the yield and exact number of towers we would need to finance for. 
as I said, we're in the early stages of uh, estimating how many tower gardens we would need. So at this time, we're not completely sure on those exact numbers. As part of the early development, we have begun market research with the Quincy area restaurants. And here are some findings that we've found from franchise restaurants. Uh, what we have found is each one has their own corporate supplier, and which means uh, these businesses rarely outsource for other produce. Um, but when they do, it's through large suppliers like Sam's Club or Walmart. We have also found that bulk supply pricing uh, was confidential pricing. This type of information they didn't want to share with us for our research. And lastly, fresh and local for a franchise is the least of their worries. Um, I mean, simply put, it's all about this green and not this green. Some more conclusions for market research is our target market. What we have found is a small business um, or potentially our own QU cafeteria is more of the right niche to sell our product. Chain businesses like Texas Roadhouse or Zoop might market fresh and local, but when I did market research with Texas Roadhouse, their fresh and local was a supplier in California. What we found also is grocery stores only look for high volume, bulk delivery, and low pricing. So these two options do not fit our target market like a small business would. As we are new to this business, we have found some challenges along the way. Uh, one of those being, like Faith talked earlier, the $1,000 tower garden itself. Um, one garden is fairly expensive for a club with college students, so we would need to finance for more. We've also found growing from seeds takes more time to germinate, so we began growing from seedlings that have already sprouted. This saved us time, but did not save us money. Uh, this cost about $50 for those seedlings. We also lost 20 plants in this process of growing um, the tower garden. It turns out being an inside farmer is not actually that easy. Through our challenges as inside farmers, we have learned many lessons. Like I talked about earlier, we lost 20 plants. And some of the things we learned from losing 20 plants is we need to control the temperature of the room. Uh, we need to control the water, the pH levels, adding more nutrients to the water. And we also need to complete more market research at an earlier time. What we found is doing market research with businesses when they're busy is they're not gonna answer our questions. So we would look to maybe finding a right time and doing the research earlier when it fits their schedules as well. We also would like, um, one of the lessons we learned is to educate uh, consumers, like people in the community and people at our school. Uh, what we have found is not a lot of people know about this innovative way of growing fresh and local um, produce. Here's the next step of this project. We would want to put a fully grown tower garden into the QU cafeteria for what we would like to call tower tasting. The goal would be to wear some chef hats, chef costumes, and stand by our garden and serve the fresh produce straight from the, the, the tower. Eventually, we would want to expand this project into a student-led business, hopefully offering produce for QU students and staff. We believe this product, project can be a great source for an entrepreneurial experience for QU students 
to come. And here is some of the market research we did. This is Zoop. Uh, this is a franchise business restaurant. And we have found places like Zoop would not want to buy our products because they look to get from one supplier only. Um, so what we would look for is a place like Tiramisu, which is a locally owned business that looks to get fresh quality and local produce. Another group of target marketing that we did was the QU cafeteria. We have found that the QU cafeteria would be someone who we could actually go to first um, and, and look to sell them produce because they buy basil, parsley, spinach, and green leaf lettuce. That is what we um, do best with on our tower garden. And then Texas Roadhouse is another franchise restaurant. We have found that places like this only go through their select distributor and bulk suppliers when they need to source elsewhere. Here's some contributors to our project. Uh, I wanna say a special thank you to Mason Petty for bringing this tower garden and helping us out with that. And then of course, a special thanks to Dr. Margie Williams for donating us this tower garden and giving us this grant. And then Dr. Cynthia Helleman, our CEO advisor for all the work that she does with our club. This will conclude our project. Now we will look for the, well now I will ask if there's any questions. Now you guys, you guys said that you wanted to put the tower garden, I'm guessing that's multiple towers, in the cafeteria. In what space would you put that in? Like in the front? Like, because obviously that takes up a little bit of square footage. So where would you really put those? So the, for the, this tower garden, uh, what we would want to do is just show um, QU students in the cafeteria what we can do with this project. Um, if you're speaking on further um, plant, further towers, uh, we would have to find a, a space elsewhere and then move that product from that space into the cafeteria. Given that on the one of the next to the last slides you had the prices for what you could attain for the different things, go back a couple more. Yeah, right there. This one? So knowing that basil is $15 a pound, parsley is 31 a pound for 60 count, knowing, now knowing what you could sell it for, would you reconsider what you actually put it in the tower uh, to begin to grow? Yes. Uh, what we've found is we can successfully grow basil the best and get the best yield with basil. And we know we could compete with this price. So what we would do is grow the whole tower full of basil instead of diversifying it. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I have questions. What are the current trend and the future in terms of aeroponics uh, in the uh, market, like um, in the agriculture and food production? Are they going to have a lot of aeroponics now because it is expensive? Uh, this is an emerging market. Uh, we've actually seen a emerging uh, business in St. Louis that has a million dollar uh, facility that they're going to start producing. Um, they've already have a partnership with Schnucks uh, to supply I believe basil to their uh, stores. So it is a early emerging market, but there's many benefits to it. Uh, this million dollar facility that
their building only needs six employees and one full time to maintain the basil. Since Quincy University is obviously like housing the actual like tower or towers in the future, would they get a discount in the cafeteria? Well, this is, uh, for us, we believe this is more important for the students to learn and grow as entrepreneurs and gain that experience running their own business. Uh, for us, we believe the money isn't the most important part but the experience for students to grow in uh, the entrepreneur space. Are there any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. This concludes the first day of the academic symposium. We appreciate your attendance today, and we hope that you will join us again tomorrow as we will start at 10 a.m. And have a great day.